nothing to lose. <laughs> if you're able to stand this time for the scripture reading, and this morning is becoming from Jonah, the third chapter, and we'll be starting with the 10th verse. Then we're going to jump down to Jonah, the fourth chapter, verse 1 and 2. So first, Jonah, the third chapter, verse 10, and it reads, when God saw what he had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out his destruction he had threatened. Now we're going to jump down to Jonah 4, 1 and 2. This change of plan greatly upset Jonah, and he became very angry. So he complained to God about it. Did I say before I left home that you would do this, Lord? That is why I came away to tarnish. I knew that you are a merciful and a compassionate God, slow to get angry, and filled with unfaithful love. On fate and love, you are eager to turn back from your destroying your people. I have read you Jonah 3 and 10, and jo Jonah 4 and 1 and 2. God, a blessing to the readers of this word. Amen. 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 Lead me. Guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk 
Heavenly Father. Yes. Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes, sir. God of all things mighty. Yes. Lord, we take the time right now to just thank you for being God. Yes. Thank you for sitting high and looking low upon your people, Heavenly Father. Thank you for taking time for building this world, Heavenly Father. For each and every person, Heavenly Father, yes. you thought individually about us when you made us, Heavenly Father. Lord, thank you for your son, Jesus, who came down from heaven to walk and talk amongst us, to teach us, but more importantly, to die on the cross for our sins yes. so that we can have everlasting life, so that we can have a greater foundation and a greater relationship with you, Heavenly Father. Lord, thank you for the Holy Spirit yes. that come and is our comforter, that leads us and guides us each and every day. Yes. Lord, we want to take the time, Lord, to pray for your people, Heavenly yes. Father, for all the people under the sound of my voice, Heavenly yes. Father. Bless them in a mighty way. Those who might be struggling, Lord, Lord, we ask that you make the curve road straight, Heavenly Father. Those who might be dealing with mental issues, we ask that you put a hedge of protection around them, Heavenly Father, and heal them right now, Master. Those who might be unemployed, Heavenly Father, give them a job, Lord. Yes. Those who might be looking for their children, Heavenly Father, let the children be found, yes, Lord. So. Lord, we take this time, Heavenly Father, to pray for your people, Heavenly yes. Father, and all the ministries in this church, Heavenly Father, yes, for all the people that come through the door, Heavenly yes, Father. Yes. Lord, we ask, Lord, that your spirit fall upon them, yes, Heavenly so. Father. Anything that is said and done here today, Heavenly yes, Father, Lord. let you get all the glory, yes. all the praise, yes. and all the honor, Heavenly yes. Father. Let somebody know about this man named Jesus. Yes. Let somebody know that if they're struggling, Heavenly Father, and if they're looking for a way, Heavenly Father, they just got to call on his name. Yes. They just got to say, Jesus, yes. Jesus, Jesus. Yes, and sir. you will be there, Heavenly Father. You will stand there with them, Heavenly Father. You will take them out the valley, Lord, and yes. put them high in the mountaintops, Lord. Yes, Your Bible says that all the heels are yours, Heavenly Father. All the land is yours, Heavenly yes. Father. So if we want anything, Lord, we just ask it in your son's name, Lord, yes. and you said it will be ours, Heavenly Father. But Lord, we just want to take this time, Heavenly Father, to say, Heavenly Father, thank you for this church body, yes, Heavenly Lord, Father. Yes. Thank you for these people, Heavenly yes, Father. Yes. Lord, thank you for allowing us to worship for 157 years, yes, Heavenly sir. Father. Yes, through the times and tribulations, through the storms and the rains, God, you have been faithful and you yes. have been true, yes. Heavenly yes, Father. Sir. And Lord, as long as we have breath, Heavenly Father, yes, as long as we have our minds set on you, Heavenly Father, yes. Lord, continue to bless this house of God, yes, Heavenly sir. Father. Lord, we ask these things in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray, Lord, and all God's people say, Amen. 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 Oh, Lord, Oh, Lord, lead me, oh, Lord, lead me. Amen. Amen. This includes our devotion part of the service. We now going to turn over to our pastor. Amen. 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 Good morning, Second Baptist. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Therefore, we will rejoice and be glad in it. I greet each of you in the name and faith of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith, the giver of every good and perfect gift. Amen. I would like to welcome everyone joining us in person as well as those joining us online. And just a reminder for those of you who are worshiping with us online, please be sure to check in on our live stream let us know where you're joining us from. Listen, our sole purpose for gathering here today is the worship and the praise of our awesome God. And we invite each of you 
joining us in person as well as those who are online to help us praise the Lord up in here. Up in here. Up in here. Amen. And now before I move on to my pastoral observations, I have invited a very special guest. He is the professor from the Elgin Community College. Professor Eric Enders is now going to come and make a brief presentation regarding a wonderful learning opportunity at the Elgin Community College. Say amen as Professor Enders comes. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Parks. Good morning, Second Baptist. Good morning. My name is Eric Enders, and I'm excited to be here representing the Education Department from Elgin Community College as I share about one of our new uh, course offerings this fall. I know you might ask, why are you here sharing about a course at Second Baptist? And I'm happy to answer that. The name of our course is Men of Color in Education, and it was born from the vision Dr. Randall Hodges, a lifelong educator and member of this congregation. And so it is, we thought it would be especially significant that we had our first information session here with Second Baptist. So when you hear men of color in education, it's a broad term, and that's intentional. It allows us a holistic approach to examine the experiences of men of color and students of color in educational settings. This course is gonna be part history as we examine the society, we examine uh, the history and legacies for men of color in uh, education in the United States. It's gonna be part lived experience as we examine the societal impacts that shape the educational experiences of men and boys in education and part practical application as we will develop a cultural competence, uh, skill set, and disposition that will better equip you to serve men and boys of color in educational spaces. Now, I know, I know when you hear this, you may say, well, um, is this, I'm not an educator, or I'm not in school, but this course is for more than just educators, it's more than just for students who are looking to pursue uh, a career in education. This is for anyone who is looking to increase your knowledge, increase your compassion, increase your awareness, and which will uh, also help increase your skills to serve men and boys uh, of color in various settings. So uh, obviously this morning I don't have time to share all of the details of our course, but Pastor Parks has graciously invited us to your Bible study uh, this Wednesday at 7 p.m. so that we can share a little bit more about our course and answer any questions that you may have. Um, if you're looking, sometimes, you know, many of us are lifelong learners and you're looking for an opportunity to increase your knowledge, or you know someone who is looking to pursue education, or you find yourself in situations where you may not be equipped to meet the needs of men and boys of color in whatever setting you serve. And this course will help you do that. And so I invite you to join us on Wednesday uh, at 7 p.m. to learn more about this course, I've left some flyers here as well as a couple of posters that have my contact information and a little bit um, more information about our course. And uh, I look forward to hopefully seeing you on Wednesday. You know, I just wanted to add one more thing. I never had the pleasure of meeting and knowing Dr. Hodges, but I am honored to be able to stand on his shoulders yes. to help bring his vision to pass, Amen. to serve men and boys of color. <laughs> Amen. So I invite you to learn more about our course and uh, hopefully join in. Uh, we're going to have a good time and even Pastor Parks has enrolled in the course. Yes, sir. So um, your leader has found it uh, obviously um, important enough to join in and also to allow me some time here. So thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday and I appreciate your time and attention today. God bless you. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Professor Eric. And as he has said, I have en enrolled in the course already. I think this is so very significant for such a time as this. And so we have invited him, as Professor Anders has said, that the, for them to come in the front portion of our Bible study, and for however long it takes, maybe it's just 15 minutes or 30 minutes, 
that to address any additional questions. And so we pray that you would join us this Wednesday for our Bible study in that order. Is Sister Shelley here? Is she here? Amen. And so now we have a very special announcement coming from Sister Shelley Tom Thomas. And then after that, we have an announcement from Sister Tanisha Cole in that order. Say amen as they come. All right, come on, Dr. Evans. Come on, let's say amen for Dr. Evans this morning. Amen. Good morning again this Sunday. Good By default, I'm standing before you today. But I wanted to remind you that we are celebrating our pastor and first lady's third anniversary on the fourth Sunday. And the kitchen ministry would like for you to know they are going to feed you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> to stay, wow. you don't have to go home, you know, and lay in the bed and not come back. Just stay here and fellowship with us prior Amen. to our guests arriving later on during the day. As we fellowship together and celebrate the third anniversary of our pastor and first lady. Amen. The, the envelopes are in the foyer. For those of you wishing to make a special love offering for them, they are available in the foyer as you enter the building. Reverend Denise Holt will be delivering the 10 o'clock message. Oh, and the kitchen minister would like for you to sign up as a sheet at the hospitality desk so they will know how to prepare accordingly you know, so you have enough chicken. Amen. But anyway, hoping you'll be here. And uh, we look forward to seeing you and having a great time on the fourth Sunday. Be blessed. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. I am so excited today that I have the opportunity to talk to you guys about our women's conference. The conference will be held starting Friday, October the 20th through Sunday, October the 22nd. And our scripture for the conference is Proverbs 31, verse 10, and also verses 13 through 22. And it reads, a wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. So as you can see, these verses talk about women and all that we can do, all that encompasses being a woman. Yes. So that's what this conference is focusing on, the total woman, because Amen. we're not just women, we're not just wives, we're not just daughters and mothers, we're doctors, we're lawyers, Amen. we're scientists, Amen. Amen. we're teachers, we're counselors, and most of all, we're women of God. Amen. Yes. So this year, our conference is also going to include a sneaker ball that will be at Moretti's um, in Bartlett, and it's open to all adults. So as Pastor would say, the brothers, the brothers. <laughs> watch out, right. watch out. Amen. Um, you are also invited to come and participate in this conference with us. So now that I've gotten you all excited, keep that same energy with this next part. The tickets for the conference Amen. are only $50. Amen. So for $50, you get everything. You get the speaker, you get our uh, the learnings that we're going to have, you get the sneaker ball for all just $50. For the fellas um, and, and anyone who 
are, is just planning to attend the sneaker ball, that's $30. We will be serving food, so come out, show us your sneakers. Um, I, I've decided, even though my son doesn't know, I'm gonna borrow his cherries. I feel like I bought them, so they're, they're kind of mine anyway. Um, so last but not least, registration will uh, begin next Sunday, October, or excuse me, August the 20th. So more details to come. Thank you very much, God bless. Amen, amen, amen. As I've often said it, it goes without saying, Second Baptist, we are a busy church, and so it's important that as we close out one event, we continue to press forward and prepare for our next event. And so it's never too early to start preparing for the women's conference. It will be here before we know it. So take due notice and govern yourselves accordingly. I do not come to tell you something that you do not know, but rather to remind you of something that you should never forget. These are my pastoral observations for Sunday, August the 13th, 2023 Bible study is every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Please be sure to join us this week as we continue our helpful discussion of the exciting story of Jacob in the book of Genesis. And also, as I've already noted, before we begin our discussion, I've asked some of the faculty of the Elgin Community College to join us to answer questions about the new class being offered entitled Men of Color in Education. We hope to see you on this Wednesday night. Also, thank you so much. Thank you so much to those of you who remain faithful in your giving, even in times like these. Please remember to utilize our drive and drop service at any time throughout the week. You can drop off your offering, pick up daily devotionals and extra offering envelopes as well. Also, also face coverings are optional here at the Second Baptist Church of Elgin for all worship services, activities and events within the building. But as always, please, ma'am, please, sir, stay at home if you feel sick. Amen. And also, as we've noticed that it seems like the numbers are starting to slowly increase, we ask that we be even more especially vigilant as far as being safe as it relates to how we act and interact with one another. Please take due notice and govern yourselves accordingly. Also, our, our nursery has in fact reopened and it is up and running. Please be sure to drop off your babies, but just a gentle reminder, we are only accepting children aged one through five at this time. And if you have children aged six to 12 years old, we do ask that you consider releasing them to our children's church in the front sanctuary. We promise, we promise to take real good care of them. Also, this is the second Sunday of the month. Somebody say the second Sunday. Amen. Amen. This is the second Sunday when we do our youth recognition. Come on, put your hands together for our wonderful, amazing youth. Amen. Amen. I do have one announcement. Aaliyah Echols, the daughter of Loretta Echols and the late Derek Echols Sr. received her white coat from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry on June the 28th. Amen. That is quite an accomplishment. Where she at? She here? Some, is she here? Come on, stand up with your white coat on. You got your white coat. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Amen. God bless you. I had a white coat one time. Didn't nobody clap for me. It was a white suit <laughs> with the matching gaiters. Nobody said a word. Amen. So we thank God for our youth. Also this afternoon at 3 p.m., we will be traveling to New Community Baptist Church in Aurora. Amen. Put your hands together for New Community. Amen. Serving Rayford and the good people of that congregation will be traveling there at 3 p.m. for their annual choir day. Amen. And I hope that I will not be there by myself. Amen. And those who can, I pray that you will join me as we travel to Aurora to help them celebrate. We pray that you will. Amen. I, I, I think I'm shortening the sermon today. I, I don't know. I guess I'll know as it flows, but uh, I'll shorten it so we can hurry on to Aurora. Amen. Also, join us. Join us for a sister to sister brunch fellowship offering on Saturday, August the 26th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m at the Southern Bell Restaurant in Carpentersville. Join us for fellowship, food, and fun. Uh, the ministry, the missionary ministry is asking that you RSVP by August the 16th via flock note. Amen. As a reminder, this is the way we 
communicate with one another within the Second Baptist Church of Elgin. We are registered in Flocknote so that we can receive links and information in a current and up-to-date manner. And so, please, ma'am, if you are in intending on going to the Sister to Sister brunch, please RSVP by August the 16th. Also, the Illinois Minority Business Development Agency and Entrepreneur, uh, they're going to have a summit at Elgin Community College on August the 15th. There is a summit. It is entitled, Discover the Path to Success and Learn How to Get Certified and Secure Contracts with Funding and Bonding. And this goes out to anyone who owns a business, who wants to start a business, who wants to improve their business. This is the place you really need to be. They have an unbelievable panel of experts that will be uh, working on that panel. The president, Dr. David Som, is on the panel. Mark Ferguson of the Illinois Deputy District uh, Director's Office, Rosalind Putman, and Noel Cerna, an attorney, they will all be on the panel. And so anyone who is interested, contact info at strategicexceptions.com. You really don't want to miss that. Amen. Please, please continue to pray for the sick and the shut-in. And I invite each of you to join us on our weekly prayer line from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And if you need the log on information, please see a member of our missionary ministry or contact our very own Sister Cheryl Macon for more information. And for those of you who desire specific prayer on Sundays after worship, immediately following morning worship, meet us in rooms 205 and 207, and there will be someone there to pray with and for you in your specific prayer need. And now, before we receive our tithes and our offerings, our SBC Hospitality Ministry will come on behalf of the church to bring official greetings, say amen, as she comes. Amen. Good morning, Second Baptist. Good morning. This is the time in our service when we have set aside to greet the visitors. If there are any visitors uh, present here that are first-time visitors, would you please stand and please remain standing until you've received an official welcome. Now, on behalf of Pastor Patrick E. Parks and the entire church family, we extend to you a very hearty welcome. We know you had many choices of places to worship, and we are delighted that you chose to worship with us. Now, if you're looking for a church home, please consider Second Baptist. Thank you for coming. Enjoy the service, and we pray that you will receive a spiritual blessing. Amen. You may Amen. be seated. And to our online visitors, thank you for joining us as well. You may use the contact us link to let us hear from you or for your prayer request. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless each and every one of you who are joining us online. And now as our music ministry prepares to come, let us take this opportunity to receive our tithes and our offerings. It was the Apostle Paul who said in his letter to the church at Corinth, let every person as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. I'm going to ask Reverend Janie McCutcheon to now come at this time to offer up our offertory prayer. Good morning, church. Good morning. God's method of financing the church is through tithes and offerings. Amen. And God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we come this morning in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for bringing us to the house of prayer one more time. We don't take it for granted, Lord, that we are able to move and have our being in you. We thank you, Father God, for what our ears have heard, our eyes have seen thus far, and we thank you for this worship experience. And now, Father, as we give according to what you've blessed us with, we ask, Lord God, that you would touch each one that gives today and bless each person. We know, Father God, there might be someone here that's not able financially to give, but we pray, Lord God, that they would be blessed so they can take part in this worship experience. And now, Father, we ask that you would bless the offering that's being given. We ask that you would uh, multiply it, Lord. Uh, press it down, shake it together, and run it over for the building of your kingdom. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let's receive our music ministry now as they come. child and I'm doing the best that I can why my way gets so hard sometimes I just don't understand Lord, hold on I need you to hold my hand oh, I can't make it by myself oh Lord hold on I need you to hold my hand I travel from place to place Many times I'm treated so bad Then I sit and think about how I can't miss a friend that I never heard Lord, oh Lord I need you to hold my hand I can't make it without you, Lord Oh Lord, I need you to hold my hand one more thing, church. I'm going to continue to run with Jesus. Come on. Even if I have to run alone. Because it's my determination to make God's beautiful heaven my home. Lord, oh Lord I, I need, need you to hold my hand. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Oh, Lord. Oh Lord. I need, I need you to hold my hand. Ah, oh, but sometimes when my burdens press me, I'll say, hold me. Hold me. Jesus. Jesus. Hold me. Hold me. Please, Jesus. Jesus. The reason why. Hold me. I need you to hold me, Lord. Jesus. Because if you don't hold me. Hold me. I will surely fall. Jesus. I need your strength. Hold me. I need your mercy, Lord. Jesus. But if you hold me. Hold me. Everything will be all right. Jesus. Somebody says you're doctor. Hold me. Yes, you are Jesus. Jesus. Somebody says you're a lawyer. Hold me. Yes, you are Jesus. Jesus. Somebody's lying in pain. Hold me. Pain and affliction. Jesus. But they have you, Lord. Hold me. They have you, Lord. Jesus. Have so much pain. Hold me. In their body. Jesus. They're crying, hold me. Hold me. Right now, Lord. Jesus. I need you to hold me. Hold me. Right now, Lord. Jesus. You're a doctor. Hold me. Yes, you are Jesus. Jesus. Somebody said you're a lawyer. Hold me. Yes, you are Jesus. Jesus. Somebody said you're bread. Hold me. Bread when I'm hungry. Jesus. Somebody said you're water. Hold me. Water when I'm thirsty. Jesus. Somebody said you're rock. Hold me. Somebody says you're rock. Jesus. Somebody says you're rock. Hold me. A rock in a weary land. Jesus. The Lord says you're shelter. Hold me. In a time of storm. Jesus. I got one question for you. Hold me. Do you need the Lord? Jesus. Do you need him to hold you? Hold me. Hold you in the morning. Jesus. Hold you in the evening. Hold me. Hold you late in the late in the late in the late in the midnight hour. Hold me. If I call on Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, I need his hand now. Hold me. You just steal away. Jesus. And ask him to call me. Hold me. Hold me. Hold me. Jesus. Hold me. Hold me. Hold me. Hold me. Hold me. Hold me. Oh, hold me, Lord. Hold me. I need you to hold my hand every, every day, oh Lord, I need you to hold my
May your struggles keep you near the cross. May your troubles prove that you need God. And may your battles in the way they should. May your bad days prove that God is good. And may your whole life prove that God is good. May your
Master, how we thank and praise you for this another preaching privilege. Yes. So we pray now for power from on high to proclaim your holy word. And to that end, O oh God, when it's all said and done and we depart from these premises, we pray that by the power of your preached word, our situations might be confronted. We pray that our souls might be convicted. We pray, O oh God, that sinners might be converted. But lastly, in times like these, we pray that our souls might be comforted. So forgive us of our sin. Fix us for this worship experience. Fill us with your spirit, O oh God, and then feed us until we want no more. These and other blessings we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thy forever will be. Summer and winter, and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed thy hand has provided great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness great is thy Lord, unto 
to me. Come on, give the Lord a hand, please. If he's been faithful to you, if he's blessed you, if he's kept you, he's a faithful God. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Listen, all I need, thy hand has provided great, great, great is thy faithfulness. Lord unto me. Come on, let's all stand. Let's all stand in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. He's a faithful God. Amen, amen, amen. Our God is great and he is greatly to be praised. In the Old Testament, there's a word I want to read in your hearing in the prophecy of Jonah. Amen. Jonah commencing in the 10th verse of the third chapter, concluding in the second verse of the fourth chapter. When you arrive at Jonah chapter 3, you'll find these words recorded as translated in the New Living Translation. Hear ye the word of the Lord. When God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction that he had threatened. This change of plans greatly upset Jonah, and he became very angry. So he complained to the Lord about it. Didn't I say before I left home that you would do this, Lord? That's why I ran away to Tarshish. I knew that you are a merciful and compassionate God, slow to anger. And filled with unfailing love, you are eager to turn back from destroying people. Amen. Have your seats. This is the word of God for the people of God. For just a little while, for the time that is mine, as we move forward in this mini-series that we've started, I want to preach and teach with this thought in mind. God is merciful. Amen. God is merciful. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Last week we began a sermon series entitled God Is, where we are seeking to understand more about who this God is that we worship, who this God is that we adore, who is this God that we pray to, that we praise, what is he, what is he like, and why does it even matter? We have therefore embarked on this journey of discovery into the very heart of the living God. Last week we learned that God is holy. There's none like him, none besides him, and there is none more reliable than him. And he is therefore worthy, I said he's worthy, of our trust and our reverence. This week we will discuss how God is merciful. According to the Moody Handbook of Theology, mercy is the goodness or love of God shown to those who are in misery or distress, irrespective of their deserts. Now, that ain't chocolate chip cookies and ice cream. He's saying their deserts. He says even if they deserve to be shown mercy or not. Are y'all tracking with me here this morning? The Hebrew word hased in the Old Testament emphasizes help or kindness as the grace of a superior. And it stresses the faithfulness of God despite humanity's unfaithfulness and therefore emphasizes pity, sympathy, and love. This is the word that, that, that Jeremiah used when he declared in Lamentations 3, it is of the Lord's mercies. That we are not consumed 
Because his compassions, they fail not. As a matter of fact, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And it is my prayer that upon the conclusion of this sermon, we will better understand the heart of God and how he desires to show mercy to all who call upon his name. And that the help we seek is only a prayer away. I said it's only a prayer away. Forgiveness is only a prayer away. Listen, healing is only a prayer away. Deliverance is only a prayer away. Paul said it like this. All of us used to live in sin just like the rest of the world. Now, some of us forget that. I say some of us forget that we all used to live in sin. But Paul says by our very nature, the sin nature, we were subject to God's anger just like everyone else. Paul puts us all on the same playing field. I told you that Elder uh, Clay Evans would always say that the ground is level at the cross. He puts us all on the same playing field just like everyone else. But here comes some good news. But God, who is rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead, even though we were toe up from the flow, up, even though we were wretched, we were raggedy, we were sinful, what did God do? He says, because of our sins, he still gave us life. Let the church say life. Hallelujah, yes. When he raised Christ from the dead. And then he adds parenthetically that it is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Brother Dave that used to be here, he used to always sing that song. It was God's grace. I, I remember that when I, was, when I was coming here. It was God's grace that I made it this far. It was only by the grace, the grace of God. At the time of our text, at the time of our text, the prophet Jonah, this minor prophet with a major message, Jonah is angry at God. Now, now, before I tell you why he's angry at God, can we just pause with our sanctified selves? Can we just take a breath and just be honest this morning and admit, you're going to feel a little better here today, admit that there have been times in our lives when we were just flat out upset with God for one reason or another. I'll give you a minute. We in church, you might as well be in church this morning. You've been mad at God for one time or another. You're angry about something he did. You're angry, help me, Reverend, about something he didn't do. You're angry about something you wanted him to do. And can I tell you this morning, that's okay. Tell somebody, that's okay. That's okay. Because by being upset with God, you are essentially acknowledging the sovereignty of God. In other words, you're acknowledging that whatever was done, in your life, you recognize it with nobody but God who did it. You're pressing your plea to the person who is responsible for life. And in that way, you are having a healthy reverence for who God is. You recognize that whatever happened in your life, somewhere up in there, God had something to do with it. And God going to hear from me. I see what you're doing, God. You're going to hear from me, and that's okay. 
Because at least you're bringing your complaints to the right department. Oh, glory to God. You preaching real good here for a second Sunday. I remember when I was at work uh, several years ago when I worked a real job. Amen. I, I was punching the clock. Amen. And I was complaining about something. And, and I was just talking and an older gentleman with gray hair. He was just listening and shaking his head. And then by the look on his face, I just said, maybe I should stop talking. You know, something just came over me. I said, this man is telling me to just be quiet. And I said, I guess it ain't no use to me complaining. It ain't going to do no good. And the old sage said, no, it ain't nothing wrong with complaining. As long as you take your complaints to the right person. <laughs> oh, glory to God. I never forgot that. Nothing wrong with complaining, but talk to somebody who can do something about it. Have I got a witness? And so in chapter 4 of our text, Jonah is complaining to God. And in this little book of the Bible, we learn a lot about the prophet Jonah. In chapter 1, he's running from God. God told him explicitly what to do. He takes off running in the other direction. And then in the midst of a terrible storm brought on by his own disobedience, in the midst of a storm, we see Jonah now sleeping. He's running. He's sleeping. And then when he's thrown overboard by some people who ain't even connected with the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. They had enough sense to know something ain't right about you, fella. You done done something. And Jonah said, throw me overboard. And so now he's running, he's sleeping, and now he in the water, he perishing. Are y'all tracking with me? But before he can drown, the Lord miraculously sends a fish to swallow him up and now he's in the belly of the beast praying. He running, sleeping, perishing, and now he's praying. And then after having his attitude properly adjusted, we see him finally obeying God and preaching. Had to twist the preacher's arm to do what he had. He's running, sleeping, perishing, praying, and now finally preaching. And now as we have arrived at the point of preachment, after seeing the sinful citizens of Nineveh respond to his message of rescue with repentance instead of praising God, here he is in chapter 4, pouting. He's running. He's sleeping perishing, praying, preaching, and now pouting. Are y'all tracking with me as I preach these peas this morning? He's pouting because God has chosen to show mercy to a group of people that Jonah feels, talk boy, do not deserve the mercy of God. I'm talking about Jonah this morning. Jonah says in verse 2 of our text, that's why I ran away to Tarshish. Because I knew that you are a merciful and compassionate God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. And look at what he says in the summary. You are eager to turn back from destroying people. Now, isn't that good news this morning? Isn't it good to know that God is eager to show mercy? Hallelujah, yes. And so the question on the floor becomes for Jonah, Jonah, if you knew that God was merciful and compassionate, then why are you pouting? Why are you pouting if you knew it? He only did what God does. Are y'all in here with me? Listen, that would be like the deacons leading in devotion. Us hearing the choir minister to us through music. The people of God hearing the preached word. Offering the invitation to discipleship and then getting upset. When three, four folks come walking up talking about, that's me. I've decided to follow y'all. 
what are they doing? You mean they're actually coming to receive Christ? Lord, help your people. My brothers and sisters, Jonah has a bad attitude. Can we just call it like a T.I. is? I said, Jonah, he has a bad attitude. Jonah said what God told him to say. Jonah did what God told him to do. But yet, his heart is still not in harmony with the very heart of God. And some of us do what we're supposed to do. You come to church, you check the box, you go to Sunday school. You read your Bible every now and then. You drop an envelope in the basket. I said an envelope. You'll catch that next Sunday. You do everything you're supposed to do, and yet your heart is not in alignment with the very heart of God. Jonah did the right things, but for the wrong reasons. And God uses this moment, beloved, to reveal to Jonah the depth of his love, his mercy, and his grace. He responds to Jonah's complaint with a question. Here it is. He asked him in verse 4 of chapter 4, is it right for you to be angry about this? That's a very pressing and a poignant and powerful question on this morning. Is it right for you? What God is essentially saying, you, the very recipient of my mercy. Now you're turning around and you're angry when I demonstrate that same mercy to someone else. Is it right? Is it right? In other words, God is essentially declaring to Jonah what he declared to Moses in Exodus 33 when he said, I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy to whom I choose to show mercy. You got nothing to do with it. Just be glad you got some. I'm grateful for what the Lord has done for me. Let whoever else come behind me, but I made it in. I got in there. Have I got a witness? Beloved, God is merciful. Let me hurry on. I'll be through in a minute. In this text, this text is tailored to teach us, first of all, as we look at the mercy of God, God recognizes the intent of the remorseful. Did you hear me? I said, God, it is only God who can recognize the intent of the remorseful. In other words, only God know if a person's worship is for real. Have I got a witness? The text says in verse 10 of chapter 3, when God saw, God sees. He sees all. He knows all. He looks within the heart of humanity and he knows what's there. Nothing is hidden before the eyes of God to whom we must Give an account, the Hebrew writer says. God saw, the text says. And, and one of the nuances of this Hebrew word that I appreciate is that it means to discern or to distinguish. God can discern where our hearts are. Listen, when God saw that the people of Nineveh were serious about their salvation, his mercy began to move in their direction. Oh, hallelujah, yes. God honored Nineveh's repentance, even though their past sin was reason enough for an outpouring of judgment. I mean, nothing they were doing suggested that they was getting ready to start doing right. Nothing in their past was symbolic of what their future held. But yet, when the call went out and they told him that you better get right, church, and let's go home, when they were challenged with the holiness of God, when they were threatened with judgment, they said, wait a minute now. We better get this thing right. 
But let me be clear this morning. Just because we repent, we do not obligate God to forgive us. I want to say that one more time. Just because you say, Lord, I'm sorry, he, he's still not obligated to show mercy. But somebody knows he chooses to show mercy. Aren't you glad about it? Oh, hallelujah, yes. Repentance appeals to God's mercy and not his justice. And that's why Jeremiah said it is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. By demonstrating sincere sorrow for their sins, they open the door to receive mercy from the master. And that's why Paul in 2 Corinthians 7, he said, for the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience leads us away from sin and results in salvation. Paul says there's no regret for that kind of sorrow. But he contrasted by saying that worldly sorrow, which lacks repentance, results in a spiritual death. Only God knows whether it's sincere, godly sorrow or if it is worldly, shallow sorrow. Are y'all praying with me? God saw the outward display of sorrow demonstrated by the people of Nineveh. Everybody went to fasting. It was a national day of sorrow and reconciliation. Listen, the king removed his crown, took off his regalia, and sat amidst the people as an equal. Everybody went to mourning. Even the animals put on sackcloth and started fasting. I don't know how they got a burger after that. I don't know how they were eating. They, they must have put a muzzle on the animals. And the Bible says that they were dressed in sackcloth. Everybody went to mourning. Everybody was remorseful and sorrowful. And when God saw that, he said, these folks is sure enough sorrowful. This was an overwhelming, remarkable display of godly sorrow. God knows whether people are sincere or not in their actions. And that's why Jesus quoted Isaiah in the book of Matthew when he said, These people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. God recognizes the heart of humanity. He can see our sincerity, and he can also discern our deception. May I ask you a question? Is it time for us to get serious about our salvation? That's a question on the floor. Are you ready to get serious about your relationship with God to stop playing the church and begin being the church? But secondly, as I hurry on, not only does God recognize the intent of the remorseful, as I hurry on, God rewards the efforts of the repentant. I said God rewards the efforts of the repentant. Look at the B portion of verse 10. It says, when God saw how they had acted and how they had put a stop. Somebody say stop. Amen. A stop to their evil ways. What did he do? He changed his mind. Lord, have mercy. And did not carry out the destruction that he had threatened. In other words, once the people made the decision to move towards God, God made the decision to move towards them. And it's one thing to say I'm sorry and then turn around and do the same thing. But it's something entirely different to say I'm sorry and then not to repeat that same behavior again. That's true repentance, a turning away. Not a 360, a 180. Right face and walking in the other direction. Are y'all praying with me today? Oh, yes. A lot of people, a lot of people struggle with the words of chapter 3, verse 10, where it says, God, help me preach, Reverend. 
changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. There's a couple of questions that come to mind. Did that make Jonah a false prophet then? He goes out saying what God said. That's only the preacher's job. I had a preacher in here. The preacher's job is simply to say what God told you to say. Did that make Jonah a false prophet? Or even worse, does that make God a liar? Surely not, for God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. One commentator said it like this, Jonah's preaching was like all warnings of judgment. It was an invitation, a window of opportunity to repent and avert the promised judgment. His words had an implied, if you do not repent, in front of them. That, that's the way he say we should read that, that, that God is essentially saying, if you don't do what I told you to do, this is what will happen. But if you do what I told you to do, then this will not happen. And in that way, God can change his mind. Oh, hallelujah, yes. And we need to know that because God is sovereign, he has the divine prerogative to do whatever he chooses to do. I said a whole lot. I said he can do whatever he chooses to do if he so desires. And it's very much like the words of the chronicler when he prophetically proclaimed, if, look at you tracking me with me, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and then turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Well, I'm through. God bless you. Thank you so much for your patience. It's 1215. I told you how God recognizes the intent of the heart. Secondly, I told you how God rewards the efforts of the repentance. But lastly, and then I'll soon have my seat and shout my own self happy. Lastly, God relishes the opportunity to redeem. That's what I said. I said, God relishes the opportunity to redeem. Look at what Jonah said. He said, I knew. Can't you see him? I knew it. I knew it. I knew that you are a merciful and compassionate God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. Jonah says, you eager to turn back from destroying people. Now, my brothers and sisters, this flies in the face of the skeptic that argues that if God is so loving, then why would he sentence people to eternal punishment? Listen, God is not eager to send, but he's eager to save. God has not walked away from us, but it is us who has walked away from him. And God does not want to destroy us. God wants desperately to deliver us. Hallelujah. And that's why Peter said that the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise. As some people think. No, he is being patient for our sake. Does not want anyone to be destroyed but he wants everyone to repent. I'm through this morning, but can I say that again? God wants everyone to repent. Beloved, God relishes the opportunity to redeem. Jonah said, I knew, I knew your heart. I knew that you were a merciful and compassionate God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. The unfailing love of God is the special love, the special relationship that God has for all of humanity. It's the kind of love that keeps on loving even 
when we fall away, even when we disobey, and even when we go astray, God says, come on back. Come on back to me. The unfailing love of God always gives us the opportunity to begin again. That whatever we've done, wherever we've gone, we can always come on back to God. Because he's merciful and he is compassionate. Will you respond to God's invitation to return? Jesus said, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you would hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Let me tell you today, God wants to be your friend. God wants a relationship with you. The door of the church is open. Man, woman, boy, or girl, let a Christian experience candidate for baptism. You can come today and give your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. Today, salvation can be yours. New life can be yours. If you just come. Come on, cry. Anybody glad they came to the house this morning? Are you glad to be in the present this morning? Somebody this morning came looking for a blessing. And if you came looking for a blessing, this song is for you. If you need the Savior's power in your life each day and hour, he'll send the blessings in. You pray. He will give you strength and power. You can call God any hour. He'll send the blessings in. You pray. You know what I found out? It ain't no secret what God can do, what he does for others, he'll do for you, he'll send a blessing, send you pray. One more thing, one more thing. He will give you yes. strength and power. Oh, yes, you can call God any hour. He'll send a blessing. You pray. Come on, brothers, help me say it. He will. Just one blessing, but blessings over and over. Blessings that you have, you have ended. Ended. If you go yes. to him in prayer, and he asks you, why are you there? He'll send the blessing.
sins you pray oh yeah you sin the sins you pray Yes, he will.
then after corporate prayer, we're going to have a baby dedication, and then we're going to move on from, from that point. Amen. Let's all stand as we prepare for our corporate prayer, and we ask for Minister Ashley Barnes and her family to make ready to come up to the front as we dedicate young Gianna Rose. Mm -hmm. Pray. Hallelujah. Hey. into the light. Keep us forever in the path we pray. Our Lord, our Master, and our King. How thankful we are for what our hearts feel at this moment. Oh God, we thank you for your preached word. We thank you for the receptiveness and the responsiveness of these, your people. We thank you for your mercy that is new every morning. We thank you, oh God, that you are God all by yourself and beside you, Lord, there is none other. We acknowledge our total and utter dependence upon you, God. It is in you in which we live, we move, and we have our being. Thank you, O oh God, that you have demonstrated through the power of your spirit on today that you are yet moving, you are yet delivering, you are yet changing lives by the power of your gospel. We thank you, God, today. For these that have come, we thank you for every visitor, for every member. We thank you, O oh God, for those that have responded to your message of rescue. Yes. Our prayer is that you would wrap your loving arms around young Elijah and that the seed that you've planted in his heart, that mustard seed of faith, it might germinate and grow and allow it to become what you would have it to be, O oh God. Raise him up in the fear and in your admonition that he might run on in Jesus' name. Thank you, O oh God, for young Philip, for his enthusiasm that yeah. to respond to the gospel, to be taken to the waters of baptism. Oh, yeah. Father God, help us to surround him with your presence. And Father God, to encourage him on. Yeah. In Jesus' name, Father God, give him what he needs for such a time as this. Oh, yeah. Father God, allow him to connect with the right people who will model the proper behavior before him, oh God, yes, that he might mature in the Lord and you might equip him to do the work of the ministry. Oh, yeah. Thank you, oh God, for Sister Carolyn, mm -hmm. for her returning to the house of worship. Yeah. Thank you that she received the message that it's okay to turn around and come back. 
And so continue to build her up, oh God. Oh, yeah. Prop her up on every leaning side and help her to run on in Jesus' name. Oh God, we thank you today for this church called Second Baptist. Yes. We thank you upon the shoulders of whom we stand of many women and men who have labored to make this church what you've called it to be for such a time as this. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the leadership team of this great church. Thank you for every ministry. Thank you for every member. And then, God, we thank you for every visitor who stopped by on today. Yes. Our prayer is that something was said or done to plant a seed that might encourage them to continue on in their journey of discovery of who you are, Father God. Yeah, we recognize that you want us to know you more, that we might be able to love you sincerely yeah. and to respond to what you're calling us to do. And now, oh God, we also have a special prayer for those that are bereaved in our midst. Father God, wrap your loving arms around them and comfort them as only you know how. Father God, remember the Reader's family. Father God, remember other families who have lost loved ones, Father God. Let them know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. Comfort them and keep them in your perfect peace with your presence in the name of Jesus. And then, oh God, as we prepare to send our babies back to school, Father God, we ask that you would have a special uh, blessing of protection yes. around the children of this district, U46, oh yes, God. Lord. Father God, encourage them to, Father God, be all that they can be, Father God, mm -hmm. as they learn and grow. Protect them, keep them safe from all hurt, harm, and danger in the name of Jesus, yes. Father God. And then we pray a special blessing for those who suffer with mental illness and with substance misuse. And, Father God, those that have been victimized, Father God, by domestic violence and human trafficking, Father God. Thank you that you have an eye for those who have been looked over, the helpless and the hopeless, oh God. Oh, move by your power yes. and by your spirit even now, God. Oh, yeah. Even now, thank you that everyone matters to you. And Father God, help us that we might help others, that we might lead them yes. to the reality that there is, there is in fact, oh, there's a blessing in serving a true and a living God. Lord yes, God, man. we're going down from this place, but never from your presence. Lord God, we ask that you would continue to bless us and keep us. And then as we prepare to dedicate this young baby, hallelujah, Father God, Gianna Rose, Father God, we pray a special blessing over her life. Father God, strengthen her parents to be that model of behavior that you're calling them to be. Bless RJ. Bless Ashley, Father God. Bless sister, Brother Danny and Sister Georgiana, Father God. Strengthen them. Encourage them for the journey. And we'll be careful to give your name praise, honor, and glory. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless in the presence of his glory. And to, and to present you faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power. Let every heart say amen. 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 Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. Come on, Sister Ashley and RJ. Amen, amen, amen. Lord have mercy. It's been a full day already. I hope y'all praying for me. I need some strength. Amen. I need a chicken wing, a pork chop. Amen.
We thank you for worshiping with us today. And if you're looking to connect with a loving church that faithfully teaches God's message of hope, then visit our website at sbclginil.org and follow the link that says Join Our Church. We hope to see you soon at the Second Baptist Church of Elgin, where we live and learn God's Word together.